Sawadee Krap and hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Brian Hoffman and uh, I am a tour guide and presenter here uh, with Turnstile Tours. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is the third in our series of four virtual programs uh, called Thai Food in America, Passport to the Northeast, um, which we've been hosting every Wednesday morning and we will continue to through next week, through June 2nd. Uh, and this is a series of programs uh, that is sponsored by Thai Select USA, and we're exploring Thai cuisine and culture in the United States, um, specifically taking a deep dive into the Thai communities and restaurants within the Northeast of the United States. So again, my name is Brian. I am a white male, uh, early 40s, wearing glasses uh, and a blue shirt today. Uh, and we are going to be meeting some other people as well, who I'm super excited to introduce you to. Uh, on this program, we're gonna be going uh, to two of the outer boroughs of New York City. We're gonna be heading to Brooklyn and Queens, and we're gonna visit two restaurants that are very connected to family recipes and also the local Thai communities. Um, we'll also be chatting with food writer and Queens expert, Joe DiStefano, who lives in the neighborhood of Elmhurst, Queens, which is also known as Thai Town. And he really has immersed himself in the, this community and the cuisine. So we're excited to chat with him about the, the neighborhood and about his background and, and about the Thai community. Um, so if you haven't seen our previous programs, uh, we've got two previous programs from this series uh, that you are able to still view. Uh, you can view on our website, our Turnstile Tours website through the, the uh, Thai program page. Uh, there will be a link dropped into the chat box. So you can link to those or you can go on YouTube uh, to our page as well. They're on there. Um, uh, so uh, yes, uh, the first one was about Thai ingredients and how they make their way from Thailand to uh, our plates uh, in kitchens, uh, restaurants, and at home, and how we get those ingredients. Uh, and then uh, last week, that was last week, wow, uh, uh, we uh, visited two uh, restaurants in the DC Baltimore area, and we had a little uh, interview um, with a professor and author about uh, Thai immigration and the history of uh, Thai American cuisine. Um, so those are both two that you, you don't wanna miss. And then our final one is next week, um, which is Sawasti Samtam Der, where we will be going live to Bangkok uh, to the restaurant Samtam Der, which has locations all over the world, but we're gonna go to their Bangkok location, uh, chat with them, and we will also be receiving a Thai language lesson from uh, Professor Ticha Ho, uh, who will be giving us some very useful uh, tips on, uh, on how to uh, say some uh, important phrases, uh, both in greetings and, and uh, ordering food. So, so don't miss that. Um, uh, so I don't know if I've mentioned this, I don't think I have, but we really encourage, oh, before I get to that, we do have some other upcoming programs. Uh, uh, Thai communities and food is just one of the topics that we talk about on our programs. Um, we've got two upcoming ones that you, you wanna check out uh, Thursday, May 27th, which is tomorrow, 6 p.m. We're gonna be doing a program about the history of social housing in New York City. And then on June 10th, um, we're going to be exploring Staten Island's Olmsted Beale House. Uh, and that is a free program that you'll check out. And we are excited to say that we are back in person, uh, doing in-person tours, which is how what we normally do before, uh, before the pandemic began. So we're back uh, going slowly, of course, taking precautions. And so uh, weekend days at 1030 a.m., we're doing our Prospect Park walking tours. Beginning at the end of the month on Sundays, we'll be doing uh, our Brooklyn Navy Yard bicycle tours once again. Uh, and then we have two special uh, um, in-person tours. Monday, May 31st, as you see, we're doing a military history harbor tour. We're doing that, of course, on Memorial Day. So that's gonna be super exciting. And then Saturday, June 19th, we're gonna be doing a walk and sketch through Prospect, Prospect Park. Um, uh, so, uh, so two exciting stuff. And uh, this is how you can become members. That's how you get access to our live virtual programs, including all of our past programs. There's different tiers, um, as you see here. So all of the details are on our website. Um, as I started saying, we really encourage interaction on these programs. So we would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, if you have any questions or memories, or if you've been to either of these restaurants or uh, yeah, anything you'd like to share, including where you're from and if you've been to our previous type programs, uh, um, please drop them into the chat. There's two ways of interacting. Uh, you can say panelists and attendees, which means everybody here gets to see what you wrote and gets to interact and, and answer questions 
and share thoughts, or you can send them directly to myself uh, and Andrew, who is back behind the scenes handling the chat box. Um, and that is to panelists and also our panelists, Joe and Chef Busaya and Chef Tan will also see those. So, um, so yeah, any questions for the chefs or for Joe, please drop them in the chat and I will pass them along to them. We also have closed captioning available uh, for anyone that would like to take use of that, that's um, hard of hearing or deaf or just would like to read along, please click uh, the closed captioning button on the bottom of your screen. Um, we also have uh, a map that um, will be shared. There's so much, so much exciting stuff. Uh, as part of this sort of online festival that we've created with Thai Select, um, we have an interactive map showcasing the Thai select restaurants in the Northeast. Um, so there's videos and recipes. Here's a little, a little sneak preview of that. You'll be able to explore it on your own um, uh, through the, the link that you'll see in the chat box. Um, yeah, and this is the whole Northeast of the United States. Um, I'm excited because I'm, uh, I'm actually uh, hitting the road, going on a little road trip. Uh, later today, in fact, and I'm going to be hitting at least one of these restaurants. So I'm using this and that's a great way if you're, if you're traveling or, or these are one of your home areas to, to find out the best Thai restaurants. And of course, there's also explanations about different, different culinary regions in Thailand as well. So lots to see there on the map. Um, so uh, I, I would love to, uh, to get going on this program today. So we're going to start our program um, heading to a neighborhood uh, in Brooklyn. Uh, it's right along Smith Street in the Cobble Hill, Borum Hill area. Uh, it's a neighborhood known for its diverse restaurants and strong local community. And uh, we're going to visit what we've seen. Chef Tan is here, one of the best Thai restaurants in the borough. It's Wanisa Home Kitchen. So, um, so Chef Tan, hello. How are you? Good to see you. I think you just have to push unmute um, or Cindy who's, who's there as well might have to push unmute. Yeah, can, can you hear, hear us me now? Okay? We can, we can. Hi there. Hi, hi there, hi there. Hi, so, so you're joining us from, from the restaurant from Winisa Home Kitchen. And, um, and tell us a little bit about what, what made you decide to open up uh, this restaurant? What's your background? Well, Where do you come from? And how did you come to this? So um, I got, um, you know, I've been working. Um, I used to work with my mom. So um, I learned from her and she's an executive chef. And so um, since, you know, like um, mom's cook for um, her kid. So um, I would like to share this recipe as well to this neighborhood. Yeah. So, and your mom had a, another restaurant before this as well in New York, is that right? Oh, that's right. Yeah, w w that was in, was that in, you said it was in Chinatown? Yeah, right, oh, you remember? <laughs> I do yes, remember, right. of course, yeah. All right, cool, yes. And All so right. she was she was cooking traditional Thai, uh, Thai dishes there? I'll say yes, and um, pretty much that, uh, we call that uh, homestyle cooking. And then when did you open Wanisa? Back to 2017. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and so your mom, of course, is very influential and you learn the recipes from her and that's uh, part of how you came to open up this restaurant. But now where does the name Wanisa come from? Oh, that has after my daughter. So your daughter's name is Wanisa. Right. So it really is a family, uh, a family restaurant. I mean, inspired by your mother's recipes and now named for your daughter. How old is your daughter? Right now it's four something. She's so the four. Same, same age, same year with this restaurant. So she's going to grow up knowing that there's a restaurant named for her, which is right. exciting. And she, she's been same to the restaurant, of course. And yeah. Um, so uh, now I know, so the restaurant is in Brooklyn, but you actually live in Queens, right? The neighborhood that yes. we're going to, going to be going to in a little bit. Um, how long have you lived there? And where did you come from in Thailand again? I'm from Bangkok and um, I came into the, the state um, in the year of 2000. Okay. And you moved to Elmhurst, is that right? Yep. And you've lived there since. So, so what is what is that neighborhood like? I know there's a large a large Thai community there. Exactly. 
walk yeah, around when you... and I see that um, many people just, you know, like, like walk in China. <laughs> people who yeah. mostly are Thai. Yeah. Um, now, so tell us a little bit about the food at Wanisa. Um, uh, what are some of your signature dishes? And uh, you mentioned the recipes are, are, are your mother's. Um, so, so tell us a little about the food. And sure. we can actually uh, share yeah. some, some slides and some photos of the restaurant as we're, as we're talking. Yes. First thing, you know, um, you know, I, I think that I'm very really proud of the, um, the pad thai sauce recipe things um, that we cook from the scratch. And also we do the sauce based on tamarinds. That's gonna be um, pretty much that sauce called like, is authentic and is like um, um, old school recipes to do uh, yeah. to do the sauce that way. But you also don't you also have a a, a sort of non traditional pad thai, the crispy pad thai. Yeah, because I saw that um, many years ago. I saw that um, that's re becomes very popular in Thailand. So I try it here too. That's yeah. So there's all these crispy elements added to the to the dish. Is that right? That's yeah. right. So let's see some of the photos, and we can. Uh, there's the the pad thai. That's the traditional one, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, and I I actually uh, ate there at, at your restaurant a, a few weeks ago, and I had um, uh, this uh, this rice dish, uh, cow kluk kapi. Is that correct? Yeah, you got it right. Cow kluk kapi. I did get it right. Okay. Yeah. And it's. That what was a dish that I actually I, I was not familiar with, and um, I think we're um, going to pull up that slide. Maybe um, it was uh, well. Here's the outside of the restaurant. Of course, you have an outdoor area now for uh, for COVID safety uh, reasons. Um, but uh, talk about that dish. It was uh, a shrimp paste. This is it right here. Yeah, can you tell us yep. about this? Sure. Um, that's this way to show you that um, some some place called. Um, there's the, we call royal menu because uh, that like very, um, this is like the food that um, actually that orig originate from the, um, the royal memory and the royal yeah. uh, menu thing. So, and well, you can then, see that it includes yeah. everything. <laughs> it looks like. Yep, just a bit of it, everything, just like that. Yeah, you see some mango and some uh, Chinese, it's the sweet Chinese sausage and the dried shrimp um, and the, the herbs, the cilantro and the, the shallots. Yeah, it was delicious. Um, and, uh, and I think there's some other photos here we could go through and we could talk, talk about as, as well. Um, uh, we see the pad thai and I believe this is the dish you're gonna cook for us today. This is the, is that correct? This is the mango salmon? Yes, is this. Yeah, this so, is a seasonal menu things that uh, we doing here. Yeah. Um, well, you know what? I think I think it would be nice to see a little bit of the restaurant. Maybe show us around a, a little bit, and then we'll head to the kitchen and um, and and you'll show us how to prepare the, the mango salmon. Um, and if anyone has any questions for Chef Tan about about these dishes or about his background, please drop them into the chat, and I'll, I'll certainly pass them on. So you're at the bar right now. Um, I oh, see. Yes. Are you mm -hmm. are you able to show us a little bit of the interior of the restaurant? The interior. Let's see. Pretty much, uh, if you wanna see, um, uh, at this moment that um we're not open yet. So, okay. Um, all chairs up still. Okay, so uh, it's not. I'm sorry, it's not quite it ready to ready to showcase. Yeah. But, um, but you you oh, you must way, you must go to the restaurant. We have this for um. Customers who come to dine here. Oh, what are those? <laughs> Thai candies. Oh wow! Oh wonderful. Um, what kind of candy? What is it? What does it taste like? It's just like a sweet peanuts candies, and also the um, it's like um, palm sugar, and uh, some ah, yeah. it's gonna be like you know some people call camel but it's not really caramel. 
Okay. Um, and this is well, um, we... mangosteen. Oh, mangosteen, yeah, of course. Nice. Yep. So yeah, there's these little touches around the restaurant and I, I, I guess um, you'll have to head to, to Smith Street and, and see for yourself both indoor and outdoor dining available. Sure, let me see that. Um, we can show first that um, here. Mm -hmm. Swans. <laughs> And this is, is this pieces from Thailand that you got? Yes, I got this from Thailand. Wow. It's from antique store. Oh, nice, at an antique store. It's not yeah. gonna be like 100% um, perfect because this is from antique, but I like it, I like, I like the way it is because, um, because, it's, because it's imperfect, but Yeah, well the Thailand. beautiful uh, swans really provide a nice atmosphere there, yeah. So why don't we, I think let's head into the kitchen um, if, if you're ready and you'll, you'll show us sure. the salmon. Now is salmon a All traditional right. a traditional ingredient in Thailand? Is that something that you'd find in, in dishes there or is that something that sort of has been incorporated in, in, uh, in the US? Somehow this is something that um, I create because um, by the season is uh, getting warmer. So um, I think that's something that healthy and also um, something refreshing. Yeah. And besides, when it's come to the summer, it's become um, it's come to the warmer thing. Well, besides, um, you know, we have to create something um, to add something like a little bit of sweetness and sourness that uh, help uh, increase the appetite for uh, for people. Yeah, absolutely. And those, that balance of flavors is, is what it's all about. So you see, yeah. we see all the ingredients laid out. We see the salmon and the, the mango and there's tomatoes and shallots and cucumbers. So yeah, why don't you uh, prepare it for us? Sure, the first thing that we have, um, I, can, I have to tell first that, I have to say first that what ingredients that we have, number one, we have the, um, this, uh, the steak cut of the uh, Norwegian salmon. Mm -hmm. This is wild salmon. The size is about um, is around ten ounce. So we have uh, chopped up mint leaf, some cashew nuts, and uh, the mint tops for the uh, decoration. And um, this is a uh, red onion and scallion. Chop up everything and cucumber. Cherry tomatoes already cut in half, and um, papaya. Uh, some place that they, they do a uh, green papaya, but some place they do a uh, little bit red. So I do try to right in the middle, so that not too soft and not too green because it's green sometimes that people feel like too sour and it's uh -huh. really difficult for some people that um, to consume. And we uh -huh. have the um, the young dressing sauce thing here. And um, one teaspoon of uh, the chopped dry garlic and some chili. This is Thai chili, I bird, red I bird chili, yeah. and some Thai dry chili here okay. to add some spiciness. And I like so, yeah. to use uh, both of the uh, chilies because um, the color and the taste, this is um, give you the, um, the spiciness, but also um, the, this one can give you some both taste of the flavor. It's gonna give um, some complex coffee spiciness as well. Yeah. Um, someone yeah. we had a question about how do you pick a good papaya? How do you how do you know when it's at the right level of, of ripeness? Not too ripe, not well. Uh, to say first, uh, this is mango, but uh, if oh. you want to talk to this is actually mango. Okay. Oh, we lost your, your video for just a moment. All right, so um, can you hear me now? We can hear you. Yeah, we see you now. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually it's mango. It's, it's I, mango. Yeah, yeah. I thought, yeah, yeah. Um, great. Well, it's probably, you probably, you know, we need to make, you need to feel it and make sure it's not too soft and not too hard. There's like a, probably a special. Right. Uh, yeah, it's all about. Right in the, yeah, right in the middle. So um, it's not too tough. It's going right. to be uh, a bit soft, but, but not too soft. Just right in the middle. All right, so let's um, let's see how it all goes together. Sure. Um, pretty much, we will cook the salmon. 
this thing should take um you know about 10 to 15 minutes oh okay so we we have to wait for the salmon okay I, yeah i don't know if we're gonna um well, um, and then do you prepare the salad and then the salmon goes on top or goes next to it? Yes, um, not necessarily, uh, the salmon's gonna be on the top. Okay. Um, did you have another salmon prepared or, or not yet? I don't know if we're gonna, um, maybe we could come back. Uh, sure, sure, we can come back. We could uh, come back to you after it's all, it's all plated. Um, I, just because we uh, we have to get over to uh, uh, to Queens, and as you know, it takes a long time to get there. <laughs> uh, we did have a question uh, from someone. Uh, do you leave the skin on the salmon? It didn't look like the skin was there. Skin is out. You take the skin off. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So much easier for for everyone to eat. Some people like the skin. Some people don't. We uh, so much easier to eat there. So um. Uh, what about the mango, the mango part? Can you put the mango uh, salad together for us and then maybe we'll, we'll come back for the final plated dish? Sure. First of all, so we have all the ingredient here. Here we have the garlic. So the garlic's going in, right? And both chilies. Chili. All right, so and you're mixing the, the secret sauce here, the secret dressing. Yep, secret. So, <laughs> can tell you, what. <laughs> you can't tell us, huh? <laughs> nope. so that, that's similar to a dressing secret. that us. No, even tell so you it's not going to be secret anymore. <laughs> But sweet and sour, and obviously you're adding the spicy to it as well, and, and the herbs mm -hmm. and vegetables here. So yeah. And everything looks so fresh. I mean, the, the mango we can see is like at, you were mentioning the, the, just how you want it, but everything else is like so beautiful color-wise, and you can see how fresh those tomatoes look. Yeah. So um, because when we do the salad, this, um, the most important is uh, the freshness of the uh, the vegetable. Mm -hmm. If you mix the fruit, the uh, you know you, you have to make sure it's all fresh. So the mango, when you chop it up and you just um, clean it with uh, running water and uh, just you know if you want it uh, to be extra crisp and fresh, you just add um, some um, you know you can soak it in ice water. Oh, and, to keep uh, those colors. Water. Yeah, to, uh, to keep the color and add some, um, like um, a bit of um, um, salt. Uh -huh. That would help, yeah. Oh, that's a great tip. Yeah. So you're mixing them all. And, and then uh, the, and it's the other yeah. stuff, the, the, the peanuts and the, the cilantro, those go on as a garnish at the end, is that right? Yeah, right. And this is all because, um, you know, do not try to um, stir it too much. Because it's that um, you know, growing the ingredient because it's all vegetable and you have to be gentle. Right, and then are, those are those are peanuts or are they cashews? It was oh, they look like cashews. It is. It is. Yeah. Okay, I I got it wrong there. Uh, and again, it's cashews, cilantro, and is it Thai basil? The other, the other herb. This or? is um. Cashews and uh, shop up mint. Oh, I'm it's not mint sure. Leaf. Yeah, mint leaf. But oh, mint, mint leaf. Oh, yeah, okay, but nice. you can add cilantro. Cilantro is going to give you um, a good taste as well. It's going to yeah. boost up the taste. It's pretty good. Many Thai salad that um, that uh, they also use cilantro in the um, in the ingredient. Well, it looks, I mean, it looks delicious already. And then the, the, the cooked salmon isn't even a part of it yet. So I know it's going to look yep. fantastic. Um, yeah, I know it takes a, a little, like it takes a little while to cook the salmon. So I think um, it's, I, I think maybe what we'll do is we will, 
Um, we'll, we'll head over to Queens and then maybe we can come back so we can see the final product. Unless you think it's, uh, you cook the, how long do you cook the salmon for? Someone is asking. 10 minutes? Think about, about 10 minutes depends on the, uh, how strong the fire you, that um, you use. But for at the restaurant, the commercial, we have a very strong um, output of the fire. So it's pretty much, you can see the color uh -huh. of the fire. You, get it you see that the, the blue means sure. very strong. So the way yeah. is kind of, when you use the, the, the fire at home, you mean the stove at home, it's going to give you more red color. So the red color is mean is lower temperature. So the blue is higher temperature. Yeah. So, and you flip it as well, right? You, you would turn it right. over. Okay. Yeah. You don't have to now. It's just as someone was asking if you. Here. Oh, just beautiful. Oh my gosh. That's worth the price of admission right there. Look at that. Gorgeous. It's not going to take long because, um, you know, as I said, it's very strong. So hot. Yeah. It's very hot. Oh, wow. I do love salmon. So this, um, so yeah, so this is something you put together for the season. So how long is this going to be on your menu for? Through the summer? Through the summer, yes. All right. Okay. Um, really a beautiful sear there, yeah, as, as Andrew was mentioning. Um, so I, I think what we're going to do, just in the interest of time, we're going to head over to Queens, to actually the neighborhood that Chef Tan lives in. Uh, and we're going to chat with Joe and Chef Busaya from Sabai. And then, uh, and then at the end, uh, we won't forget, we'll come back here so we could see um, the, the final product here, if that sounds good. Yeah. All right, so th Chef Tan, thank you so much. Uh, we'll see you at the end, um, uh, but we're gonna head we're gonna head over to to Queens now um, uh, to the neighborhood of Elmhurst. Uh, we're gonna do the commute that Chef Tan does every day, although we're gonna do it virtually, so it's gonna it's gonna be quick. Um, Tan was telling me earlier that traffic was very very bad this morning, so thankfully we uh, today we don't have to deal with that uh, with technology. But we're gonna uh, we're gonna start our intro to Queens, and we're gonna uh, welcome to Queens. Uh, from someone who probably knows it better than maybe anybody else, certainly when it comes to, to food and, and culture. Um, so I, I'm pleased to introduce a uh, food writer um, and Queens expert and tour guide and uh, all around uh, Queens man. I don't know. I don't exactly know what the, prop, the proper introduction is, but Joe DiStefano. Um, hi there. Sawadi so Kav. Sawadi so Kav, good to see you. Good to see you too. Hello, hello. Welcome to uh, Thai Town. It's nice to know that uh, Chef Tan uh, and I live in the same neighborhood. Yeah, we, you might even live on the same block. I, we, we didn't it, get into those specifics yet. It's entirely possible. <laughs> so you're, you're outside Sabai, correct? The, the restaurant where you I, go You to. know, I am in their beautiful uh, dining area. Oh, amazing. And, and I am outside. And uh, we can uh, see if we could get a view of it from where I sit. Try this again, bear with me. Yeah, no worries. And oh, yeah. there it is. Here we have Sabai. So, so yeah, so in a little bit, we're gonna go inside, we'll meet the chef uh, yeah. uh, and see another cooking demo. But Joe, tell us a little bit about you. How did you, so I, I don't know if I introduced you properly. I'm sure you've got many specialties. Uh, but how did you get involved in exploring and writing about uh, about the different cultures in Queens? Are you even are you from Queens originally? I know you're from New York. You know, it, I I was uh, born in Queens and I grew up on Long Island. And in uh, the late '90s, I moved to Woodside, Queens, and I quickly discovered that the uh, the Seven Train, which I would later learn was dubbed the International Express, was the best way to experience all sorts of food and cuisine. So I lived in Manhattan. Again, I, work, I worked in Manhattan and lived in Woodside, and I would take the train further into Queens and walk along Roosevelt Avenue and try a different cuisine every night. You know, So one night it might be Mexican, one night it might be Colombian, maybe Filipino, certainly Thai. Yeah. Yeah. And if so, if people don't know Queens, I mean, this is by far the most diverse part of maybe the most diverse city in the world. So, so you're really at the, 
at the forefront there. Um, and so, uh, and so you, you mentioned, of course, the Thai community. How did you get so immersed in that community itself, and how did you learn about it? Well, that, that that's an interesting story. So I, I like to say that <clears throat> if you're like me, if you like to explore food and culture, and you spend enough time eating Indian food or Chinese food or Thai food, you know, and real Chinese Indian or Thai food, eventually you're going to wind up at the Thai house of worship. You might even wind up living in a Thai household like I do now. So oh, wow. basically I had been exploring this neighborhood for about five, 20 years, you know, and I, I've seen it grow up and get even more uh, Thai, you know, so basically by, you know, writing about and doing tours of the neighborhood, I got to learn more about it. But really, what really got me into it was moving to the community in late August, because there, there's nothing like, even though I was four subway stops away, I was mm. still an outsider. But now you're now you're in the middle of it for sure, and we've got we've got some photos I think of 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 you in the community and some of the some of your your favorite places as well. Yeah, so you so mentioned that the, this is a, a Thai. Yeah, that's Wat Buddha Thai, you know, and the uh, it's a Thai temple, Thai Buddhist temple, and the way I know that I'm in a real Thai community is that there's a Thai Buddhist temple here, <laughs> and plenty of restaurants. Yeah. And I think we've got some photos in, I think it's inside the, the temple. Is this? Uh, so this on, on, on the right, that's the beautiful reclining Buddha. And on the left, that is the, uh, the shrine room to the, uh, the Jade Buddha, which was actually brought from Bangkok. Wow. Do you know how long the temple has been in the neighborhood? I don't recall, but I'm going to say from the, at least the late I. 80s mid 90s so it, has, it was there it was there the first time i came to the neighborhood in the late 90s yeah so there has been a time i know it's it's sort of grown and and certainly we can talk about how the restaurants have evolved and changed but but the community's been there for a bit for for a few decades a absolutely yeah um and so let's see the next photo i think the next photo is there's a uh Oh, oh no! Well, this photo here, yeah. Tell me about what's going on here. Sure. So, so, so first of all, um, uh, Happy Vesak Day, uh, which is a big Buddhist holiday. I believe it's yeah. Buddha's birthday, and uh, this is a photo related to another holiday. Uh, so, Songkran took place around May, around uh, April nineteenth, and even though it's a month later. They've kept these stone orbs out in front of the temple. And uh, these are some friends of mine from a recent food tour who are applying gold leaf that they give out to, uh, uh, you know, to ensure prosperity for the coming year. Hmm. Yeah, that's wonderful. And I know that uh, many of the monks uh, from the temple eat at some of the local restaurants, of course, as they... I, yes, some of them do, although uh, actually a lot of talented home cooks cook at the temple. Ah, right. Okay, of course. Yeah, and then so as I think there's another, let's go through some, a few more photos here. Let's, let's talk about some of the, the markets and, 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 and the restaurants in the neighborhood. So... Sure. So this is uh, Pinoy's Thai Thai Grocery, and uh, she's a real staple of the community. So if you want to buy a Thai mortar and pestle to make mm -hmm. somtam, go to Pinoy. If you want to buy a vessel for cooking sticky rice, go to Pinoy. If you want fresh durian when it's in season, and, uh, and she's great. You know, she's the kind of person who, uh, if you shop the store, she'll tell you, you know, you might even walk away with a recipe or two. Ah, love that. That's fantastic, which I'm sure you have. Now, I'm curious, have you, do you do much cooking yourself at home? You don't need to. You live in the center of all of it, but. 
I don't do a lot of cooking at home. I reheat very no. well. <laughs> and, and, and I should just point out that sometimes Pinoy has uh, wonderful northern uh, regional Thai food from uh, uh, Chef Bunam of Am Thai Bistro delivers her food from Brooklyn. So often on weekends, she'll have great stuff. Ah, nice. And northern food, we're going to be going to inside Sabai as well, which is one of the specialties of, of that restaurant too. So so we'll, yes. we'll, we'll learn a little bit more about that. So, um, so this is inside the market. And uh, so th this is a different market. Yeah. This is Pata Market. Pata Market is a great place. Lots of prepared food. You can kind of see in the foreground on the right and lots of snacks. You can see underneath the, uh, their logo. Great place. Uh, so I, I, in the, in the, comments i learned that chef tan who we just were chatting with actually shops at pinoy the previous market we were talking about and of, co of course he does of pinoy he has does. lots lots of herbs that she grows herself and imports from oh, florida wow. and just so much stuff and he also shops at three aunties who was featured on uh, our very first program of this series uh yes so you can check that out as we mentioned um so what do we I'd like to just talk about uh, how the how the neighborhood is a little bit different in terms of the regionality of the restaurants. Like, you know, you find Thai restaurants all over the country at, at this point. Um, but I feel like right in that particular neighborhood, you've got every region you want. Right. Could you expand? Yeah, that a little bit? sure. So. About when I first came to the neighborhood, there was probably one Thai restaurant, Ayada, which is a lovely restaurant. And it was sort of a, a generalist, if you will. So the way that I know that there's a lot of Thai people here is that now there's food from all over Thailand. So let's say we have um, the first regional specialist to open might have been Huggy Sarn. So Huggy Sarn specializes in food from the Isan region which happens to be where uh, chef, the chef at Sabai is from as well. Uh, and then uh, La Moon, which specializes in food from Chiang Mai opened up. And this all sort of happened in say the past five years. And so now there are so many Thai people here that there are even restaurants devoted to specific dishes. So, M. Kalman Gai, which pins its fortunes on just one dish, Thai style chicken and rice. If you're familiar with Hainanese chicken, it's sort of the Thai version of that. Wonderful place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's great. I'm already, uh, <laughs> my mouth is watering um, just talking about this. And um, yeah, and as uh, Andrew mentioned, uh, next week we're going straight to Thailand to uh, focus on East. On one of the, the regions that Joe is just just mentioning. Oh, I can't uh, wait! I love you, Sun Food. Oh my God! Yeah, and Sum Tum Dare is is you know one of the pioneers in terms of I think bringing it to the the United States um, or introducing it you know to the United States. So um so in a minute we're going to go inside with Amanda um and Chef Busaya um but so what tell us about your relationship with Sabai how how do yeah, you know so, them obviously eating but tell us so more about so how it's you came to it. Another funny story. I had been exploring the neighborhood for 20 years, I kid you not, before I even set foot or knew about Sabai. The way I found out about Sabai is I moved into this Thai household in late August, and my roommate said to me, he's Thai from Bangkok, he said, you know, you need to go to Sabai. You need to try their Pad Thai. It's just like in Bangkok. You'll see... Wow. And you'll see that, you know, the color and it's less sweet. And and he said, you know, the chef is from Isan. You should try one of their Isan dishes, too. You should try um, the uh, the goi nu, which is sort of a chopped uh, pork stir fry. I, I forget if it's pork or beef, you know, with Isan herbs. And I tried them both and they're delicious. And uh, now it's my... Um, my favorite secret place. I haven't put it on my tours yet, but no, it's great. And I've become friends with uh, uh, chef, chef and the staff here and it's lovely. Oh, amazing. Well, we're gonna meet them in a moment. Before we go, we have a question from, um, from Kathy. Uh, 
she's asking me, is there a restaurant you would recommend for someone to get an intro into all the various dishes to sort of decide which region might be a favorite? I guess a restaurant that does a little bit of, of all the regions? I, I would say uh, Ayada on Woodside Avenue and Sabai are both great for that. Hmm. And I'm sure the sh staff could maybe walk you through that this is from Absolutely. Usana, this is from uh, Bangkok, yeah, from the southern, southern region. Um, great, yeah, great question. Um, uh, well, and thank you, Joe. So Joe, why don't you stay on with us uh, as we go um, uh, to Amanda's uh, video where she is with Chef Busaya um, at Sabai, uh, inside, you're out, you're, I guess, outside. So we'll bring we'll bring the worlds together. So um, so Amanda, are you are you there with Chef Busaya? I'm here. <laughs> Hi, Sawadi Kap. Sawadi Good to see you. So good to see you too. So yeah, so I love that Joe Joe told that story that he has been exploring um, the neighborhood for so long, but he didn't know about your restaurant till he uh, moved in uh, to a. Uh, to a, a living situation with with other Thai people, so um, so I think that speaks a lot to, about about the restaurant. Now, now tell us where are you from in Thailand again, um, and and when did you learn to cook? Uh, I'm from like a small town near like Chiang Mai, it's the northern of Thailand. The northern part of Thailand, okay. Yeah, and I'm learned from my mom. Yeah, yeah, my mom cook every day. Yeah. And did you, did your mom have a restaurant, or she just cooked at home? She, is, she, she had a small small restaurant in the in a small town. Yeah. Yeah. And so, when did you come to Queens, and when did you open Sabai? Oh, more than ten years. Yeah, more than ten years. And you own Sabai with your husband, is that right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, I we spoke a little bit with Joe about this, but how was your food? here different from many of the other Thai restaurants in New York? Mm. Are, there, are there any dishes that you're making that you've never seen anybody else make? Yeah, we have a lot of the dish. Like uh, we try to make like uh, the real Thai food, like uh, the, or, the original one, yeah, from Thailand. Mm -hmm. oh. um, because the, and, the, the, um, the neighbor is, uh, it, it here is uh, like the Thai community, yeah. For Thai people, yeah. Well, those mm -hmm. are, those are the places I want to eat at, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, so I, I uh, something else that I know that happens at your restaurant. Um, it, you have a a, a a sort of a popular. You're a popular spot for a late night hangout for many oh. high restaurant workers, right? Yeah, <laughs> and they, they don't just, okay. Yeah, they don't just come to eat, but they also. What else do they? You get drunk. <laughs> get drunk, of course. Of course. <laughs> and like a relax, relax, enjoy after he uh, they work hard. Yeah. Yeah, and I mm -hmm. you told uh, you told us that the name Sabai actually means to relax, sort of. As yeah, a yeah. So that's appropriate. That's mean but, that. But there's also karaoke. Doesn't karaoke happen? Uh, after eleven, uh, until like uh, four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> And the, <laughs> for the drunk time of course and is the kitchen open that that way yeah. now so yeah here's a setup the setup of the karaoke is at <laughs> i love uh, it <laughs> if you want to like a uh, hungry the thai food when you wake up at night you can order <laughs> you can come and order <laughs> Oh, and we, we in the Thai. <laughs> oh amazing and chef tan from wanisa has just said that he sung karaoke there at your restaurant with friends. He's, yeah. he's been there, of course. I love the world's <laughs> coming together. Oh, that's amazing. So, um, so I, where do you um, where do a lot of your ingredients come from? Do you do you buy your ingredients from the from the neighborhood? Um, uh, some um order from Thailand. Yeah. Ah, so I imagine um, order, because uh, you cannot fry here. There's some ingredient here. What's an mm -hmm. example of an ingredient that you can't find here that you have to get? Like uh, something, we have lab and we, uh, that you call like a 
paper corn or something. Yeah, paper but corn? it paper. Paper. Yeah, pepper corn. Oh, I don't know. Pepper. Oh, uh-huh. peppercorn. Oh, I'm pepper sorry. Corn. Yeah, I was pepper hearing corn. corn. <laughs> peppercorn. A pepper corn. Oh, yeah. a special but one. That it, you can... But it's different. Different from here. Ah. D- different one. Yeah. You cannot yeah. find here. Buy it here. Oh, mm-hmm. amazing. Well, so you yeah. you can find it at your restaurant in the dishes if you want a traditional flavors. Um, yeah. So um, so I know that we're you're going to do a, a quite a bit of cooking for us as well mm-hmm. today. Tell us about which dishes you're going to make for us. Today I'm going to make is two dishes like a pad thai, the original pad thai, and ah, the one lap nua. Yeah, <laughs> and lap nua, the, the 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 one is like a from northern Thailand. That's the Ikidian from Thailand. And that is is that that's a meat salad? Is that right? It's like a saute. Oh, the saute. Pork. Yeah, the saute. We were mm-hmm. been talking about so many dishes. There's a there's a meat salad that is is very unique. Um, mm. Sort of like beef. that you make, right? What is it called? Yeah, yeah, beef goy, right? The toasted like a beef goy. It's like a like a tartar, but like we a, make like yes. a Thai style. Yeah. Huh? Yes. Amazing. Mm. So I I've not been able to try <laughs> that. Uh, yeah. Me, Amanda and Joe have have been out there recently and. <laughs> We've all had a big feast. I'm very jealous of them. Um, yeah, so why don't we? So I think why don't we head into the kitchen? Uh, okay. I, I'd love we'd love to see the the famous pad thai and, uh, mm-hmm. and the lard noir. Okay. Um, and and Joe, as as we're here, if you have anything you'd like to ask or add or any, uh, um, uh, you dropped in go noir uh, tartar. I guess mm-hmm. that's the, the name of the dish we were talking about. Yeah. Uh, today we're and gonna make like a, the lab meal first. Oh, uh, uh, the, the pad thai. Yeah. Pad okay. thai first. Uh-huh. All right. And yeah, please drop in any questions as we go. Um, mm-hmm. Here this we are. This one that that that's it. That's the ingredient. That's one. Okay. The easy thing. All right. So this- we're doing. Yes. Is it trim? Bao. Today we're gonna make like a chuan pad thai. Okay. Uh huh. It's a tunip. Uh, this is a brown tofu. Huh? We use to- we use the chai. Yeah. Okay. The chai. The chives, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So she's okay. got the green ingredients laid out with the the shrimp and the uh, uh the the ra- uh, the turnips you said as well. It's a tunip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those okay. are preserved turnips, right? Those yeah, are... so. yeah, right, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. And we know you've got to get this very, very hot, right? That's one of the keys Sorry. to making proper stir fry or pad thai. We made the, the pad thai sauce already. Okay. We have already, we call like the restaurant. But... So, and those are the secret ingredients. And uh, and so, Joe, you told us. I don't know if your your audio's on, but you told us a little bit about that. You you'd never tasted pad thai like this before. You, this is very different from other pad thais. What what was it about it that that you noticed? So 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 first of all, there's a lot of bad pad thai in New York City, and I think we all know that. It sort of skews too sweet or maybe even too spicy. And, you know, what I noticed about it was really just the balance of it. You know, uh, Chef Basaya showed us her mise en place. And one of the things in there is the, those pickle radishes really lend a, like a nice sort of crunch and uh, saltiness to it. And, you know, one of the things my uh, friend from my house said to me was, you know, you look at the color of it. And it's got a it's got a good interplay of sourness, spiciness, sweetness, and uh, it's just, it's just so good. Yeah. Well. So and we uh, and we see her uh, adding the new no- the noodles already the the rice noodles. Yeah. Um, oh, they they cook real quick, real fast. Yeah. All right. So the noodles are are in there, and the yeah. Was that a little bit of was it salt? <clears throat> the turnips, the turnips. Oh, those are the turnips. Yeah. Great. I'm excited to see the color because that's something you're. 
that you're mentioning, Joe. Um, yeah, and if anyone has any questions again or, or comments, please drop them in. Um, and pad thai, for those that don't know, is a traditional, really a traditional street food from Bangkok, right? Yeah. But obviously available all over the country. You know, that's what my buddy, my friend said, you know, it's just like in Bangkok. Yeah. Which I have, uh, have you been to, to uh, Thailand yet, Joe? No, I, so far Elmhurst has proved sufficient, but I, but I hope <laughs> to get there sometime soon. Yes, me too. Well, we're going live next week on Wednesday. So get a little bit closer on, uh, on Wednesday yeah, and, in Bangkok. And, and I'm, I'm so looking forward to Professor uh, Tish's uh, Thai lesson because basically all I know how to say is, you know, hello, goodbye, thank you, delicious and drunk and food words. So hopefully right. I'll get to know more. And didn't I, I remember, didn't you teach yourself, I feel like you wrote a, a piece about this on how to say I like spicy food. I, uh, yeah, right? well, what, sort of. What, what I actually learned is that I, I no longer walk into a Thai restaurant and insistently say, can I have that Thai spicy? Because what usually happens is in an effort to be accommodating, the waiter tells the chef, you know, hey, there's some farang in the kitchen who wants it spicy, spicy. And they put in a lot of chili and garlic and you feel like you're going to die. And what happened was I spoke to Andy Ricker and I said, Andy, why is this going on? And he said, they know what it's supposed to taste like. You know, you just order medium hot or whatever. Right. Right. You don't want to go too, you don't want to go too far with it either. No, I, it's not a contest. Yep. Yep. You know, but I will say that certain dishes have different metrics of spice. So like when you order uh uh, Chef Busai's Pad Thai, medium hot. That's like a Bangkok level of medium hot. <laughs> but if you order the uh, Lob Nu medium hot, because it's an Isan dish, it's an order of magnitude spicier. Oh, that looks uh -huh. great. Yeah, it really does. I can I smell it from where I'm sitting in the dining room. <laughs> Me too. I can smell it from home. Oh, and so there's some chives? On yes. On chives. Oh, oh. Oh, beautiful. And, and, and you're right. The color looks, uh, I feel like not as, as red um, as it's. Didn't you put the, the paprika in there? Paprika, yeah. yeah a lot the of paprika. Aha, uh -huh, to give it sort of that color. And this, this looks much more, uh, uh, un, I guess, untouched. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yum. Yeah, and I know uh, Cindy has been uh, mentioning that it's by far the best pad thai she's ever had as well. So <laughs> everyone must come out to Sabai, and it, you know, I think someone was saying this in the in the panel that it, you know, hard for adventurous Thai eaters to to order pad thai because we want to try something something different. But but this is you got to try this. Yeah. So that that looks great. Um, and then we're also going to do the Lard Noir, right? Is that right, Chef? Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. So tell us about the Lard, Lard Noir again. It's a, it's a stir fry. Yeah, it's a stir fry, like a, a ground pork with like a, the, 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 the spicy thing and oak. I have a lot of veggie in there. Okay. And Chef, you get the spice mix for your Lard Noir from Thailand, yes? Yes. Uh -huh. Do you this do you one. get the ingredients? Do you, yeah, do you get one, them separately? Yes. Do you get them separately and then combine them? Mm. We 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 combine them too. Yeah. We order the thumb from the Thailand. Mm. I see. You order them separately and then blend them. Got it. Okay. All right. Let's see how. Let's see this one. We're uh. And Joe and Amanda are there, so they're the lucky ones who, uh, someone's got to eat this, right? <laughs> yeah, and you see, these are the photos of, of the dishes that she is uh, in the midst of, of preparing for us today. Okay, so this is, this is ground pork with a special blend. So this is a, a, 
uh, the liver and the putting pork in. Okay, we so we make everything in there. It's a uh, shallot, okay. chopped shallot, scallion. This is like uh, ulanto. Cilantro. Mint leaf. Yes. Yeah. Mint. That's it. <laughs> okay. And you said this is a, a northern dish, is that correct? Yeah. All right. I, I just wanted to take the opportunity to say Isan Mizan Plus. <laughs> Isan Mizan Plus, yes. <laughs> say that three times fast. <laughs> no, it's interesting because, uh, you know, papaya salads eaten all over Thailand. So, some of my roommates are from Bangkok and some of them are from Isan. And the ones from Bangkok, they don't really like a lot of the fermented fish flavor hmm. in their in their sumtom. They prefer just lime and chili and maybe not even as spicy as Northeastern folks do. Yeah. And we've, we've talked about that on previous uh, 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 programs and it is explained in that map. But uh, for those that don't know, those those regions uh, are, are, are pretty distinct in terms of, of the culinary uh, um, approach, you know, so, so yeah, sort of funkier, fishier, spicier from the Northeast than you would find from Bangkok generally, as Joe's saying. Um, so yeah, Chef Busaya, tell us what, you're, what you've put in there. What that is the, is that the ground pork? Ground pork, uh, scallion. Okay. Uh, the red onion, red onion, chopped and red onion. And, uh, and yeah, and uh, that's what they call it a lab. Lab. Yeah. Uh -huh. lab and Chef Tan is saying that that's called plata. Plata. P L A R A. P L A R A. Plata. I'm, I'm not sure. Wrong. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Plara, plara, plara. In some ah, time, like is, oh, oh, he's ah. talking to me. It gives the taste of the saltiness. So that's what plara is. It's the right. It's the salty fermented fish flavor. Para, yeah, para. Ah, okay. Ah, uh, para. It's yeah, uh, so, the water one, para. Looks like we lost your, your video for a minute. I know in the kitchen there, the reception is, uh, can be a little, little spotty. Um, uh, so we're gonna try to switch to the, the Wi-Fi. Oh yeah, let me, uh, let me come back on. So, so you have something to look at here. <laughs> I'm not nearly as interesting to look at as, as the chef uh, cooking. Um, but so Joe, you've probably worked your way through a good deal of Sabai's menu now that, uh, once you discovered it, right? Now that it's on your radar. Uh, yeah, yeah ab absolutely. So some of my favorite things, uh, I like the, uh, the Isan style pork rib soup. Thumbs up, Kraduk Mu, lovely, lovely dish. Mm. Yeah, I've never had that. It's mm. good, it'll, it'll, it'll light you up. I had it after my second COVID shot and it did me well. <laughs> Maybe that's the that's the, the 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 way to not have uh, side effects after the va the vaccine is. It, it worked for me. Yep, it's great. Okay, we've got a great uh, a great connection here. It looks like so. So you've added the the sauce. Yeah, uh, to this. this sauce. Uh huh. The liver, the liver, the liver pork skin. So this looks like it'd be it have a lot of textures as well. This particular dish, right? A lot of crunch and spicy, and a lot of balance, a lot of spiciness, and mm. it's the one thing we've been working on these programs for a while now, and the one thing we have not been able to figure out is how to pass these flavors on to the viewers at home. When we, okay. when we figure out how to give the food to you, you we'll be set. I, I'm sure they I want you smell. To smell. I can that. imagine. <laughs> I yeah, smell that. I want to smell it. We'll, we're going to work on that for, uh, for, for next time. I don't know how we'll do it, but all right. So it's 
Yeah, and the colors here too. I mean, you can you can see how flavorful this is. I mean, I just ah, uh, and the minced pork, mm. and the smoke coming out. Yep, I'm ready for lunch for sure. And some more chives there, and uh, the bean, or the long beans. Long beans. Ah, long beans. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. long beans and some scallions, and uh, I think cilantro and. It, it's uh, nice to eat that with sort of like cool, crisp vegetables. It's a good counterpoint I like that. to the spiciness of the uh, the meat itself. Yeah, beautiful shot here, and and beer, I'm sure, would also uh, um, be nice with that as well to cool you down and maybe even to. Yeah, I know sometimes beer can actually enhance the spice levels depending upon the 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 hoppiness of the beer. So if you yeah, want to do that, <laughs> beautiful. Well, Chef Busaya, thank yeah. you so, so much. Yeah, let's get yeah, a, um, a look at, mm. yeah, my mouth is watering. So, <laughs> I'm so thank you. I want to, I'm, I'm reaching through my camera. You can't see it, but I'm trying. <laughs> well, thank you so much. If there's any other uh, final questions mm -hmm. for Chef Busaya or, or Joe, yeah. we also would like to go back to, to Wanisa, um, so we can see the final uh, plate of the, the salmon, the mango salmon here. So Cindy, I see you're there and Chef Tan. All right. Oh, hi. Oh, hi, so yeah, we're back. back. <laughs> we're, we're back. We wanna see the, the final hey, plate. Hey, All right. Back on to say bye bye. Oh. Uh, okay, we're ready for you, Chef Tan. Sure. So now we have the cooked salmon here right yeah. right now. So just to make sure first, uh, when we cook the salmon, we have to make sure that um, we got the right temperature because it's going to give us the, you know, bad bacteria. Of course, yeah. So make sure you have um, temperature. And the right temperature that we supposed to get is uh, above 140, about 140, 145, that you gotta be sure that salmon is cooked and ready to serve. Okay. So right now, you see, because it's out of stove for a while, so it's not gonna reach 140, 145 anymore. Sure, it's, sure, uh, sure. It's 140 yeah. Fahrenheit. Yeah. So um, right now, here's the final step that we're going to do um, that we're gonna, Put it in a ditch. Oh, sorry. Let's start first. Oh, all right, we'll do the, the salad first here. Uh -huh. All right, so you're, you're plating it. And that's just on a, like a banana leaf there. Uh, oh, you're yes. putting the, the salad. Yeah. All right. Oh, wow. If we could only, uh, <laughs> if the seven train only went from Sabai to, to Winisa, we'd be in good shape. We could, uh, we could start, we could start at one and move on to the other. You could, you could still get there. You, the subway, uh, I guess it's the, you probably have to transfer to the G train, I think. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> so it's great about this program. You can actually uh, visit both of these restaurants in one day. Ah, yeah. Oh, and it looks like such a, such a perfect lunch. I mean, especially for the summer, refreshing and, and hearty. I mean, that's a beautiful piece of fish there. All right. All right. And so here we go, our, our, our finished uh, mango salmon. So, so thank you so much, Chef Tan and Chef Busaya. Um, and, uh, and thank you so much to Joe DiStefano as well for joining us today. Uh, and sharing his experiences. Um, and, and thank you, uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. And, and especially thank you for Thai Select uh, USA for sponsoring these programs and for our interactive map that you'll have to check out. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and thank you so much everyone. Uh, and, and next week we'll be back where as you heard, we're going live to, to Bangkok with some Tumder and we are gonna have a, a, a very special Thai language lesson. So. 
So here I love this. I feel we're all together here. I talk about a community right here. <laughs> so thanks so much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon and uh, and we will see you soon. So long.